Hey guys, how are you all doing? Welcome to episode 22 of Old School Completionist. So, once again at the Calphite Queen, it seems like I spend way too much time here, but I got my 15th, or no, that was my 14th Calphite Queen head, and I have one in the uh, PUH. And I haven't done this in a while, so I decided to head to Lumbridge and check my time played on my account, which is now 226 days. So, yeah, I've played, I was at 169 days when I maxed in April, so I've been playing quite a lot since then still. Uh, and I got a task of Dagonos, which is always what I'm kind of hoping for. I don't know, Dagonos I think is my favorite uh, Slayer task overall. I decided to buy a Jar of Swamp since I got the Zulra pet, and I want to have a Jar collection when that new room comes out for the PUH, and since I'm not going to be killing any more Zulra anytime soon, I figured I'd buy it. So, I got, I started off the task with like a Dragonstone or something, and uh, got a Circle, which is something that I haven't gotten, I don't think I've ever actually gotten a Circle, which is quite strange. Um, so I've actually gotten like one of each Dagonoth King's drop finally now. I also have been picking up the Fremnik Helm, and uh, I think later in the task I got a Fremnik Shield, because those are actually untradeables, and also cosmetic rewards, and I got, you know, a decent amount of drops this uh, trip also, which is kind of nice. Nothing too amazing yet, just, you know, the Dragon Axes and Mud Battle Stabs and stuff like that, but, um, yeah, I was getting a little bit wrecked here, but I, I managed to freeze uh, the Rex before it gets me, but there we go, an Archer Ring, it's always nice to get those. I haven't gotten a Berserker Ring in a while, but I've got three Archer Rings in my... Uh, loot tab right now just from the past like two or three tasks I believe so that was the task completed and uh, final price check of the loot uh, yeah I, I did get the Fremenic shield in there also since it's a, a non-tradable uh, cosmetic item I already have the, a few of the swords but 5.5 .5 mil for a task not too bad it's pretty standard what you can expect from DKs I would say if you don't get a berserker archery it kind of sucks and uh, spiritual creatures fuck that I got a task of Venonatus, which I've never actually gotten a Slayer task of Venonatus before because individual boss tasks are fairly uncommon, so I decided to go and try killing 35 of them. Alright, well I just logged in this morning and I see the message that my Jar of Souls sold and it sold for 1 mil. I, I left it in there for a couple days just out of curiosity. I almost took it out last night because I figured it wouldn't sell. I'm glad I left it in. So there's 1 mil for my excess Jar of Souls. Uh, basically, I just decided to sell it because I had two of them and I want to have one of each jar at least. And the reason I bought the Jar of Swamp is because of uh, I already have the Zolra pet so I'm probably not going to kill more Zolra in a while. Um, but yeah, I still will wait on the Jar of Miasma and the Jar of Sand in case I happen to get one as a drop, because it would be cooler. But yeah, I don't need two Jars of Souls, so free one mil, not too bad. Alright, so Max Task was a Cerberus task, and this was on Thursday when they did a small update to this boss where they just added uh, cosmetic weapons in the hands of the Spectres, so you can tell them apart a bit better. Which I definitely should have done from the start, but it's nice that they did it now. It probably was really annoying for colorblind people. Uh, but even for me not being a colorblind, it was still pretty annoying sometimes to differentiate between the uh, range and mage one at certain times. I don't know, but yeah, there's a nice close-up of it. It's definitely, it definitely makes it easier. I'm glad they did that. So 
uh, that's a plus, and um, yeah, so I'm just kind of killing this boss as normal. There's 22 mil attack XP also, which is kind of nice, but yeah. I, I'm using Crush now because Ash actually confirmed on Twitter that it is weak to Crush, even though regular Hellhounds are weak to Stab, so I was using Stab for a while in the presumption that it was weak to Stab, but it's actually not. So the Abyssal Bludgeon might actually be good here, but I haven't, at this point I haven't gotten an Abyssal Bludgeon yet, and I'm kind of waiting for them to stabilize. Um, but yeah, the only thing I'm not sure of is the fact that you lose out on a fair amount of defense bonuses because the uh, Dragon Defender and even the Hosta itself also has defense bonuses on it, and having decent defense bonuses is actually pretty important for this boss, so I'm not sure that the small increase in DPS would really be worth it for the Bludgeon, but the Bludgeon is at least useful for KQ and for Vishen, so it has some uses here and there. Alright, and that's the uh, Cerberus task finished up. Probably shouldn't do your last kill of a task in the actual boss area, rather than just finish it on a regular Hellhound, because if you die as you kill it, then you're kind of screwed. But I got another uh, Calphites task. It has so many fucking Calphites I've been killing recently, but it seems like that always happens when I go back to Slayer, so that is number 15 of the Calphite heads, and uh, my friend Sunstriker offered to lend me his Abyssal Blood. Uh, Ab Abyssal? Abyssal? Uh, his bludgeon for a little bit, and this is the new best DPS crush weapon, so it should be the best weapon to use for Calphite Queen, so I figured I'd give it a shot there. Um, it's going for about 40 mil right now, but it's still dropping, so I, st I gave it back to him after I finished the tax, and I probably won't buy one uh, until they stabilize a bit more, but there is you had number 16. Seems like I'm all, uh, that's all I'm getting these days, but here's some set up, sped up kills of uh, Calphite Queen. Um, basically what I found is that it seemed to be maybe like a 5 to 10% increase in kill speed, if that. Uh, it seemed like I was getting about 22 kills per hour, and normally I get about 20 kills an hour when I use just a god sword. Um, but it was only from like a half an hour sample that I actually took, so who knows. But yeah, it, I mean, like, it's pretty much objectively true that it will be faster kills, because it ha it's a higher DPS crush weapon than a god sword or a hosta, so... I mean, it, it would, there's no reason that it wouldn't be faster kills. And the only thing I still kind of want to test at KQ is using a BGS for spec instead of a uh, SGS. I don't really know which one would be better, but I've always gone with the SGS just because I like to have the healing and the slightly longer trips. Um, but I guess I'll probably try that next next task. And uh, hopefully by the time I get another KQ task, I'll be able to buy a bludgeon and not worry about it dropping like 10 mil overnight. Because uh, it's still kind of happening. Alright. k horrors, fuck that. I, I have this weird feeling that I'm going to get another Calphites task. Blue dragons, no. Smoke devils, alright. I'm cool with that, I'm cool with that. Smoke battle staff, too bad it's like a mill, but eh. It's better than uh, not a smoke battle staff, I guess. Got an occult necklace and a, a uh, smoke battle staff this task, not bad. Two occult necklaces and a uh, smoke battle staff in this task. It's going back to like what my old task used to be like. There's one task, <laughs> holy shit, this fucking task. Two smoke battle staffs, two occult necklaces in one task, and we still have 61 more to go. Oh my god, this is ridiculous. And that is the task done for a lovely bullseye lantern drop. And the next task is cave krakens, no skips required, that's very nice. So, very first kill of the task, I got a jar of dirt, which is the second one I've gotten, so that's 1 in 1k, so... Super exciting, and I also got a uh, kraken tentacle, which is kinda nice, it's like 400k. And... Task complete, that's about a... Two and a half hour task, so a pretty fast one once again. Similar kill rate to smoke devils. And the task after that, no skips required once again for another Smoke Devil task. Alright, so I decided to do a bit of testing with uh, SGS versus Crystal Halberd as a spec weapon for uh, the Thermi boss, because that's the one thing I've kind of been wondering on. The gear is very straightforward as to what you should wear, but it's not totally clear whether an SGS or Crystal Halberd is better, since at Thermi I found that uh, SGS is definitely better, but at this boss, from what I've done so far, it definitely seems like Crystal Halberd actually is doing better. Like. I've averaged more kills every single trip that I've used uh, Crystal Halberd versus an SGS, which is strange, but that's how it is. So I'm not exactly sure, but I think I'll probably stick to a Crystal Halberd. It wasn't really a super solid test, um, but it just seemed to be better. So at the end of the day, with stuff like that, it makes such a minuscule difference that it's hard to really tell. Uh, it's the same deal with like whether I should use like Pegasian or Primordial Boots at KQ, or like whether I should use a Berserker or, or, an, or an Archer Ring, because the difference is so small that it's really difficult to tell which one is actually better and it's hard to really like mathematically calculate it so yeah but that's another thing is this is how I actually do Thermi I don't know if I've really showed clips of me killing it but it's kind of sped up here but basically what I do is I walk two steps forward by just clicking one step forward per tick and then I let myself run backwards and it makes it a perfect four tick cycle since that's how long a whip attack is and that way you never run out of run energy either so I always have the boss on right click so I can easily step forward two ticks or two uh, squares 
but yeah, just the way that run, uh, run and walking works is that you move one square per tick if you're walking, and you move two squares per tick if you're running. So you walk two squares forward, that's two ticks, and then when you attack the boss, you run backwards two squares, and that's one tick. Or sometimes you walk backwards, but either way, it's one tick. And then the fourth tick is actually attacking the boss, and it takes one tick to do the attack itself. And it makes it a really nice cycle, and I kind of enjoy this boss because of that, because it's very, like, it's kind of, like, similar style to just, like, doing some quick intensive skilling or whatever. Like, it's very repetitive in a simple uh, four-tick action cycle, uh, which is kind of nice. But, yeah, I think that's all I have for you guys this week. Hope you enjoyed the episode, and uh, what I want to quickly mention for anyone who didn't see uh, last week's episode that I will be doing a 24-hour charity livestream marathon a uh, month from this weekend. So it'll be November 7th and 8th, and uh, hopefully a lot of you guys can tune in. The money raised will be going to St. Jude's Children's Hospital, so I'm going to try to raise as much uh, awareness for it as I can since I'm planning it well in advance, and I think it'll be a really cool event. So hopefully you guys are thinking of tuning in, maybe even donating to the cause. So, uh, And also, I did actually start a second channel this week, which I will link in the description. It's called AE Clips, and it's basically just RuneScape clips that I don't really want to put on my main channel because they're kind of like... It's sort of just more like casual videos, usually they're just like music and uh, either like sped up clips or just a regular clip or whatever. I've only posted like three videos on there so far, so I'm not really saying that it's going to be like super great content or whatever, but it's just kind of interesting little things that I can make without commentary that are less polished than my main channel videos. Um, and just a way for also for me to put music in videos that I like, and I don't really think I'm going to bother trying to make money off of that channel, I think it's more just going to be for, for the sake of making videos, um, so I don't really care that much about views either. Um, but yeah, like on this channel I can't use any copyright music because I monetize my videos, and on that channel I'm not going to bother monetizing most of them I don't think, so I can just post videos with music that I like and stuff like that. So if you guys want to check out that channel you can feel free, but uh, it's, you know, whatever you feel like doing, I'm not really going to try to get views too much on that channel, but I figured I'd mention it to you guys in case you were interested. And I'll probably be posting like one or two videos in there a week too since they take very little time to make. But yeah, hope you enjoyed the episode and I'll see you all later. Mm -hmm.